Over to you, Oscar. Uh, thanks very much. All right. Thanks. I am sorry for the technical problem. Um, I hope it's been solved now. Um, so, like what we were talking about, food safety engineering, it has been traditionally, traditionally an academic concept, um, but it's getting more into commercial applications. Um, Probably the question would be what food engineers do. Um, to start answering the question that what food, in, food safety engineers do, we have to understand what engineers do. Um, engineers do a lot of things. Um, we look to the sciences. Um, they are everywhere science is applied, and like this picture illustrates uh, the relation between the sciences and academic publications. There are like three major groups of sciences. Um, one is the fundamental sciences like chemistry, physics, and materials. That's where more engineers are traditionally doing uh, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, materials. Um, manufacturing, but uh, there is a new group of engineers that is more interested in biology, and that's where environmental engineers, um, agriculture engineers are working with living things, um, using engineering skills to solve biological problems, and more recently, engineers are getting into the social sciences which is working with people, um, what is like education, psychology, economics, um, sociology. We're trying to get a, an engineering touch to the sciences. Um, so if you work in food safety management, you would see that you would you realize that uh, we don't only have to understand the hazards and work with the hazards. But we have to work with the people that um, handles the food and the equipment that is being used for processing the food. So through my research and interaction with different scientists, I've completely realized that uh, the difference between a scientist and an engineer is more on the way that things are done. And a way to illustrate how scientists address problems is uh, through experimentation, hypothesizing, and experimenting. Um, there is a um, um, way to improve by thinking scientifically, and is being curious and making hypotheses and testing the hypothesis to uh, make things better, while scientists may be more interested in, in the problem solving, um, having solutions to problems uh, more directly, um, in continual improvement, we will talk uh, in a few seconds. The, there is a, an idea of if most of the problems have already been solved, we don't have to reinvent things. We have to have those solutions to the problems available. Um, so I can, we, can, we can have like a inventory of ideas or a toolbox of ideas, and then you take the tool and apply it to solve the problem. So that's more the way the engineers think. Um, um, there is uh, another group of professionals um, that uh, we call the practitioners or the continual improvement or the quality professionals that we are more into managing things and is the plan do check up cycle of planning uh, for the design measure analyze improve and control from six sigma. Um, this is more um, like a rapid science 
for rapid engineering that we use to solve problems um, without getting into an extensive research or, or uh, something novel that hasn't been done before in the food industry. So you will see there's a, a group of 35 food scientists for the Lean Six Sigma Black Belt um, that are coming as a, you don't have to be a PhD to solve problems in food safety or food science. You have to have some basic knowledge and the technique to to solve problems. And then we get into concepts like uh, what are operations, what are processes, and how we design them, how we evaluate them. Um, so back to food safety engineering. Um, food safety engineering has been defined as an engineering approach to make food that is safe and secure, and considering the overall efficiency, cost, reliability, and most importantly, safety. This was a uh, definition by a group of food engineers. Um, but if we look deeper into what food safety engineering is and compare with other fields of uh, engineering, there is a there are some people called safety engineers, and safety engineers are in the health and safety field. Um, usually, they look into anything that can happen to you as a worker. Um, accident, people getting killed because of the use of equipment or working with heavy machinery. Um, or toxic chemicals. Um, that's what safety engineers specialize. And there are reliability engineers, which is more like quality engineering. And they are more concerned about uh, just the parts with the equipment, the specifications of the parts of equipment. Uh, does it meet the function that is intended to? Uh, um, and they are more. In, they don't worry too much about if it's going to harm you. It's more about does it fit the purpose in the system. And there are the process engineers, which is uh, I call it process engineering, but it's um, pretty much most engineers too. The is making things faster or uh, more efficient, and it's a. Uh, this is also done by continual improvement practitioners. So when we're talking about food safety engineering and food safety management, we can uh, take a, a simple, a specialized approach as just looking to the safety of things, or we can use uh, common principles to try to include other areas of uh, quality and sustainability, and like we were talking about cost and efficiency. Um, so from my perspective, it's better to include more areas in um, the application of engineering as a individual or as a manager. So like in engineering, uh, there are different types of engineers. Um, what some academics are talking about is that uh, in education, most engineers are trained to work only within their group. Like you're training mechanical engineering and only talk to mechanical engineers. Um, you talk within electrical engineers and you only communicate with electrical engineers. Um, there is a uh, new group of engineers that are a combination of at least two fields, um, like mechanical and biological, or industrial and financial. Um, like, for example, to do my um, PhD thesis, I work with electrical engineers and microbiologists. Uh, similar for my master's degree, I work with 
y radiation. So we work with nuclear engineers, uh, microbiologists, uh, what is biological engineering. Um, so what some engineers are proposing is that uh, you can specialize in an application of engineering, but you should be able to communicate with the different groups in engineering or understand what they are talking about. Um, you'll notice that in, in multidisciplinary teams, like for new product development, it's a similar idea. Um, in the HACCP team, when we're creating a HACCP plan, we have to involve all the players in the company. Um, so we have to understand what accounting is talking about and what uh, production is talking about and what marketing is doing and try to convince all of them to um, consider food safety important. So that's what the hybrid engineering or the new type of engineers should be oriented to. And that's what the conversation is uh, being uh, advanced in what is called sustainability engineering. Um, besides engineering more in, back into food safety. Uh, there are some new food safety management systems like Global GAP and SQF that are integrating into food safety management other issues like health and safety and environment. And you will see that um, in the Global GAP certification system or management system, they are including more things than just food safety. And it's a way to to simplify the food safety and try to include other things that are related to um, try to make it more sustainable. Um, if you like. And also systems like uh, BRC and more, most of the GFSI are coming to include not just food safety, but now it's food defense and food fraud, which is more economical. Um, uh, defense is more into security threat. Um, so now we are not just working with the food and the hazards, but uh, we have to add more into our system. Um, but looking into how the um, the other two uh, threat analysis and vulnerability analysis have been done, and it's it used the same as a principle uh, to address these other threats and issues. Um, so within full management systems, it has been considered that um, the HACCP model can be used for other purposes. And if you have uh, in the allergy management systems and quality management systems, um, some of them, like some allergen management systems, what they said is make a hazard plan that has allergens as a hazard. Um, so we're not just dealing with a bacterial hazard, but a allergen as a hazard. And if you look into SQS management system, what they said is make a hazard plan for quality attributes and make a hazard plan for sustainability issues, which is for ethical sourcing. So from a management system perspective, what we need is the basic structure to add more issues and be able to manage more issues within the same system. So we don't have to have three or four or five systems to run the different aspects of sustainability. We can use what well, we start with food safety and under the same structure add more, more things. Um, so that's what I think that uh, um, what we use for food safety management can be used as a base for more 
issues and sustainability related issues. So um, if you look at it from an economic point of view, uh, you can have one person or one system that manage multiple things, uh, documentation of the uh, safety issues and the performance um, systems, right? Um, in performance management, I've been said that you can improve performance by following a standard like a GFSI standard, but there is also a, a trend to, if we're going to improve performance in food safety, we have to come up with metrics and indicators, and we have to measure things and manage this data. Um, so that's where an engineer can be useful in the, all the um, verification and validation of uh, the different aspects of food safety, um, probably prioritizing operational risk, um, it making the risk assessment more numerical, like we have talked before in other presentations. Um, so an engineer can be useful in the technical issues of the performance management. Um, because they come up with tools and uh, measurement techniques and how to manage that information. Which is very similar to accounting. And in, when we're talking about performance, accounting do a lot of things similar than engineering or measuring things. It's just that accounting focuses on money and engineering focuses on the technical aspects of uh, safety or process improvement. Um, so the way I see application of food safety engineering is uh, we can improve unit operations with a sanitary design because the, they just don't only have to cook food but they have to be easy to clean and they, we have to find pieces of equipment that are more easy, easy to clean and that people know how to clean them. Um, like they are not missing some spots. Um, then we come with a predictive modeling and, and risk management, which is our planning. And the area that is less explored is human factors. And human factors is more like uh, the interaction between the people and the equipment and how people learn about using equipment, how people learn about cleaning the equipment, more the psychology of how they see uh, technology and how can we make this technology more user friendly. Um, other areas of food safety management like building and structures is usually done by architects and civil engineers. It's not necessarily seen by food safety engineers. So this uh, predictive modeling, some engineers have done a lot of modeling for food safety, mostly about microbial inactivation. And there used to be a period of history in food science that they were looking for the best model to represent uh, microbial behavior. Uh, they come up with a lot of information on the different microbes and the different foods and the different processes. Uh, now this information is available online. Um, just by looking to, we don't have to be mathematicians, we have to play with the data that has been generated in the models. And there are some of them that are very user friendly and we can play with the setting and see what happens to a microbial population when we change temperature, pH, yes, or salt. Uh, these are useful for planning um, to get an idea of what may happen um, with a micro under given conditions. But uh, also engineers uh, work on designing operations 
sometimes uh, you can get get it from your the equipment supplier. They will tell you how the equipment works, um, the capabilities on inactivation of hazards. Um, but then you may need a an engineering perspective to design the entire line or how how will fit in the the whole processing line. Um, so if we look into the scientific publications, most of the scientists are looking to a specific Oscar. Oscar, can I yep. just um, put in, because it's quite an important point, can you go back to the com base, the com base um, slide? Uh, so uh, Isabel's just put on that com base is very easy to use and free, I use frequently. So that, yeah. that that's used to do what if situations, predictive modeling, um, see cause and effect, and it's completely free to use. Is that is that right? Yep, yep. Um, it's useful for planning. It's uh, it's free available for free. Uh, Combase is in the UK. Uh, some of like the USDA also have the uh, this tool available. Um, I'm looking into if it's used for, for validation because most of the um, systems require validation with a scientific study because you can validate by doing the testing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So sometimes you may need to have the, that information on the temperature kill this microorganism and then you can don't look into the paper of the scientists that made the study and then look into having that information available for your hazard plan or for your facility management system. Okay. Do, do we have, I mean, maybe everybody knows about this tool already, but maybe we uh, pass on the, uh, uh, the website or the details to all, all attendees as well. Uh, it might be a useful reference for them. Yeah, um, will be. We can we can do that uh, later with the email okay. that I'll, I'll post it in the, in the forum. Then. Okay. Um, so, like most of the new discoveries from the last year, where um, application of uh, specific type of operation like high pressure or, or microbial inactivation or um, looking into things like aflatoxins in, in seeds and how they transfer to oil. This journal, Food Engineering Reviews, is more like a complete review of uh, specific issues. But um, there are new studies on still on microbial inactivation uh, with some chemicals. Which, uh, if you cannot find a study when you're making your food safety management system, uh, you can do it in your laboratory. You can do your own testing and validation. But you can also uh, they are still publishing papers on this, uh, which is a specific hazard like E. coli, um, specific chemical or a specific process, um, like uh, using carbon dioxide to pasteurize coconut water, um, but also creating tools like uh, databases for risk analysis. Um, like this, uh, made a Canadian group on supply chains, and this are uh, an interest on more like the traceability of things and how uh, hazards are spread over, over networks. Um, there is uh, tools looking to um, that include safety, but um, they are looking to. 
some things that look contra contradictory, like full safety and energy use, and global warming, and how you have to optimize if you want to consider all of the issues. Um, and things like removing pesticides using high pressure um, in Brussels sprouts, which are most of the studies have been about inactivating microbes, but uh, they are coming with a uh, inactivation of pesticides, um, causing tomatoes. So, like when we're doing food safety management, um, we're looking to hazards and how we can control them. Um, we can do quick studies or we can look to what scientists have already published or what they are already publishing on on how to control those hazards. Um, so in short, uh, positive engineering is a type of hybrid engineering that requires a specialized knowledge in food safety. Um, you could be a food safety or a safety engineer if you focus only in the health and aspects of management. And you can do the safety of the food, the cost of the consumer, the safety of the worker that gets injured by manipulating food and food equipment. And get all that aspect of safety cover within your operation. And, but then you can start including things like costing and efficiency, um, which gets more into sustainability aspects of engineering. It started as an, as an academic idea, but uh, it has practical application in food business. Um, it's useful to, to be on watch uh, what the scientists are discovering and they are proposing. Because uh, most of the time we encounter situations where we have a hazard that we cannot control. Um, they may are coming up, maybe coming up with new ways to control them. Um, we have to remember that food science and food safety are applied sciences. They are not like physics and mathematics. Most of the, the science that are, we do in food it's an application of something that has been discovered by the hardcore science, like nanoscience or biotechnology or information technology. We just transmit it to food knowledge and um, we look at it from the food perspective to how we use it in our business sector. Um, so this is what I have, sorry for the computer problem, but um, we'll try to, I'll try to get it better for the next time. We're gonna talk about efficiency and effectiveness, a bit of economics and how we integrate the different aspects of sustainability in full set. Okay, we got there, thanks. Yeah. Thanks very much, uh, Oscar, for that. <coughs> uh, apologies to everybody for that. It's uh, it's not easy, but we've 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 made our way through. Um, we will. I, I'll edit the video and, and make it uh, more coherent. Um, and obviously, we'll issue the slides. So I'm sure everybody has gained something out of this. What we'll do now is uh, if you. Um, if you want to stop sharing your screen now, we can we can go through uh, some of the questions. I'll just read one. Julie's mentioned uh, just one point. One of my biggest frustrations are old equipment that, w that was not properly designed for sanitation procedures. I can see where proper food safety engineering plays an important part in equipment manufacturing. So the manufacturer of equipment. Uh, so. Food safety engineering um, 
is important at that step because if you don't design it right then it's you know for, for ease of cleaning then obviously that's a that's a hazard mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah to complement that idea um, like probably the daily sector at least in North America they have the 3A sanitary standard um, yeah. I think that NSF the certification body they also do certify equipment for um, sanitary design with like uh, cleaning tables and sinks and it doesn't mean like you have to certify all the pieces of equipment to be safe but um, that's the ideal design right so then when you have to work with what you already have um, you have to come up with it is cleaning, increasing the frequency of cleaning or getting your personnel specialized in cleaning that equipment, um, doing some testing or finding some alternatives to clean their old equipment. Yeah. So uh, just a question for me, Oscar. I mean, would you expect in an organization, I know there's different sizes of organization, but would you expect to see uh, a food safety engineer or let's say a food safety manager who understands food safety engineering? Um. Um, well, like when we talk about management, um, focus most on the, on the people than the technical knowledge. Um, and managing information, right? What an, an engineer can give to management is a perspective of how to make things efficient, um, how to make the maintenance easier, um, because engineers, they do a lot of maintenance. Um, and they may not have the people skills <laughs> that a, a manager has, but um, also with this uh, use of technology and equipment, uh, a manager has to have some technical skills to fix things yeah. and an engineer has to have some people skills to manage the people that operate the equipment. Yeah, so you uh, need a, you, you need an all, all, an all round, well as you say, multidisciplinary, if you've got the benefit of having individual, uh, you know, the resources to have a specialist food safety engineer and managers and etc but if not then a, a well-rounded individual uh, is better than nothing mm. uh, just uh, a question um, a question uh, is it only a, a large company that will be able to afford it that's a question um, well like uh Engineer doesn't have to be expensive. <laughs> like, like, uh, we, we tend to think that engineering is expensive, but uh, um, through my interaction with engineers, there is uh, I feel that it's like two types of engineers um, from an economic point of view. Um, some of them that are complicated, that complicate things and make uh, equipment look. Uh, like the next generation of technology, but uh, there is also, especially people coming from undeveloped countries uh, or developing countries like China or India or where I'm coming from, Latin America. There are some engineers that uh, are more problem solvers than uh, fancy designers. Um, it's just a skill that you have, um, depending on the people that you work with. Yeah. Uh, they may not have the best technology, but they fix problems. Um, that's a, a different take of engineering. Yeah. Is um, Isabel just mentioned? You know, it's it's been mentioned a lot in the comments here about the design, the hygienic design of. Um, let's say a, a food processing line and 
and equipment and machinery and the lack of that and it, fundamentally if you've got equipment that's badly designed difficult to clean uh, then it can easily become contaminated you've got allergen potentially is issues with allergen and uh, is is hygienic design a uh, a subject that's uh, studied or uh, broadly on or, or not um yeah, there is a, a recently I met a, a professor uh, at the Journal of Engineering Design, Hygienic Design. It traditionally has been more like a way to, like food safety management certification, a way to evaluate the equipment, to um, to see if it meets some requirements. Um, from what I know, it's, it's more the how easy to clean it because everything could be clean. Uh, it's just that some equipment has more chances to contaminate the food depending on the material that is made. Um, it's just making it easier to clean. Um, for me, that's sanitary design. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's a conflict between making it efficient to processing or transferring the heat and filtering things, but uh, using energy, right? But um, if yeah. you look into that aspect, which material is stainless steel or not? Uh, does it have corners instead of curves? Because if you have a curve, it's easier to yeah. flow the water compared to a corner. Um, um, Things like that. Um, does, does it dissolve the chemical when you apply it? an acid or a, a chemical that is too basic? Does it corrode the material? Um, may not be good for heat transfer, but it's easier to clean. So, um, those are the things that sanitary designers are looking. Yeah, and that's just one aspect of food safety engineering, but obviously mm -hmm. it's. Uh, that aspect is striking a chord with a lot of uh, members. You know, they're, they're talking about, um, you know, a lot of companies have got old machinery uh, that predates uh, even the concept of hygienic design, you know. So uh, a lot of people struggle daily with um, sanitation and, and cleaning uh, because of the, the equipment that they have in place. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the other thing is moving parts or it has glass, glass on. We, which we look in for safety management. Mm -hmm. If you have glass, you have to be shatterproof, uh, or better not to have glass on. Yeah. But if you start with a new process and a blank piece of paper, it's the design, uh, sanitary design is really important. So do we, um, you're right, Leticia, it is a huge area. Um, any, any, um, any other questions? Each sanitation member should be trained on microbial control, allergen, and testing. Yeah. Javier says, good universities are continually improving to meet real-life food manufacturing environments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What we'll do is, um, I'll, uh, last week I failed to capture all the comments. I'm supposed to copy all of the comments and put them into Microsoft Word and then what I do is I put them onto the discussion forum topic but I, I shut it down before I copied it. So I'll make sure I copy all of the comments and what I'll do is a specific um, discussion topic on the IFSQM website for, for this webinar. So I'll copy all the, the questions and comments from there and when I send the email out to, to everybody with the um, uh, slides etc, I'll put a link to that um, forum topic and then you can go on there, look at the comments and you can add uh, further questions and comments and feedback, that would be great if you could, so we can continue the discussion there. Um, so. That's it for, for today. Um, thanks very much, Oscar. Um, we'll, uh, we'll get it right. For you. You've got some more coming up, and we'll get it right for that. Um, 
when, when you were speaking and showing the presentation, it was great. Uh, it was just we've had a few interruptions. But um, anyway, we got there in the end. So thanks very much for today on behalf of everybody at the IFSQN. And thanks from me. And uh, I'll be in touch with you uh, shortly, Oscar. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. I'm sorry for the problem. No problem. Don't worry about it. Have a, have a nice day, Oscar.